Okay, small interruption. So, where were we? His two receptors, and then they're stimulated, and when they are stimulated, they basically communicate what's going on outside of the cell with what's going on inside of the cell. And on the inside of the cell, this stimulation of this protein, this histamine 2 receptor, causes this protein to be deformed. A conformational change happens. This conformational change then stimulates the adenyl cyclase. Adenyl cyclase then creates cyclic AMP from ATP. Then you have ADP, it doesn't really matter. And then cyclic AMP stimulates the proton pump. So the stimulation of the proton pump is actually dependent on cyclic AMP. And cyclic AMP gets broken down by phosphodiesterase. The reason why I'm mentioning this is that last semester we spoke about asthma and we spoke about methoxanthines uh, like caffeine and like theophylline. All right, these ones can inhibit phosphodiesterase. So if phosphodiesterase is inhibited, the levels of cyclic AMP within the cell increase. So phosphodiesterase is responsible for breaking down cyclic AMP. If we have less phosphodiesterase, cyclic AMP won't be broken down, and we have more stimulation happening and more acid being secreted. So if you drink a lot of coffee, what do you think will happen to your stomach acid? It will go down. Remember, down in this case is like stomach acid being more or pH going down. And that was just to make a little bit sense of secondary messengers for you. There's a lot to know about secondary messengers. So like for example, beta 1 is a GS protein, similar to this. Uh, beta 2 is also a GS protein, slightly different. And then miscrinic 1 is a GQ protein. What does that mean? Um, well, a long story. I'm not sure you guys need to know it. But secondary messengers, if you want to know more about it, ask me. I can tell you a lot about it if you want to know about it. And then hopefully you understand how that picture works. There are more pictures to come. Promise.